Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some random derivatives for practice. A lot of chain rules. Um, so let's do the derivative of e to the x squared. So if you see a, a power inside a power, that means that that means that the top one is the thing you're doing before. So um, So if I'm taking the derivative of this function, I, I need to well, I need to use the chain rule. Um, so the inside, the function that I'm doing first is the square. First, I'm squaring x. Then I'm taking x squared, and I'm doing something else to it, which is the exponential. So this is e to the x squared is the same thing as e to the u if we make u equals to x squared. So this means that this derivative is the derivative of, well, e to the u respect to x. Chain rule says it's the derivative of e to the u respect to u times the derivative of u respect to x. Now, the derivative of the exponential function, this is something I've definitely memorized by now, and you should have too. This is the derivative, this is the exponential function itself. Or if you want to use the rule we learned on Thursday, it's the exponential function times the logarithm of the base. Now, what is the logarithm of e? You already answered out loud to the screen, so I'm not going to tell you. Uh, and now this, there's the derivative of u respect to x, which I just said u was supposed to be x squared. So um, e to the u, u is x squared, log of e, log of e is 1. I am going to tell you the power to which you have to raise e to get e is 1. Uh, and the derivative of x squared, this is not the x squared divided by x. That's the derivative. Uh, the derivative of x squared is the, the thing that the power rule tells me. It's 2x e to the x squared. And that's it. Um, so um, let me show you. Let me show you another way of doing the same thing. Just writing things differently. Same computation. I'm, I'm just, I'm about to do the exact same thing, but this is just different way you can write it if you prefer. And if you don't, then don't. Uh, you are, after all, the something of your derivative. I don't know, I can't try in English especially. Uh, so what we do is we say, the chain rule, uh, we just look at this and say, I'm going to take the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside. So if I write this, what it means is treat x squared as if it was its own its own thing, just as if it was a letter, as if it was a u. So what I mean, so this is the exact same as this. They're just the same thing, except in one, I decided to use the letter u. In the other one, I decided not to. And then uh, the derivative of the inside. I know I know this is correct because the chain rule says if you feel like canceling, um, you did the right thing. You you used it correctly. If you feel, I mean, of course, you feel like canceling, and after canceling, you get what you started with. But these are not fractions, and we're not canceling. Can I say canceling on the internet? Uh, so now I think the derivative of e to the x squared respect to x squared. Well, if if I think that x squared is a variable, uh, then you're the, what I'm asking myself is the derivative of the exponential function, which is itself. And then the second part, the derivative of x squared respect to x is is two to the x uh, two times x, just like before. And of course, I get the same answer uh, because I did the same thing. 
uh, and when you do the same thing, normally you get the same answer. Um, and that's it. Are there any questions? What if what if I ask you those questions and now you actually ask them? Um, right. There's questions you can put them on Piazza. But for all I know, you're saying them out loud in your house. Okay. Uh, next one. The derivative of e to the x. First do e to the x and then square it. Uh, so now the inside function is the exponential, the outside function is the square. This is the derivative of u squared if u is e to the x, meaning if I take e to the x, plug it in for u, I get back the function I started with. Uh, so what I can do, I can do what I just did, just to make my life easier, not very use or anything. I could say this derivative is the same as the derivative of, of the, same, the same thing respect to e to the x. So treating e to the x as if it was uh, a letter, as if it was a u, times the derivative of e to the x um, respect, uh, the respect to x. So I have, uh, these two fractions multiplied together, but not, no, I have these two things that look like fractions, but they're not fractions because this is not the 17th century anymore. A lot of things are different, but anyway, they cancel and um, they they look like they cancel. And if I, if I actually cross them out, I would get back the thing I started with. So that's how I know that I did the chain rule correctly. At least so far, I have, I have many mistakes to make from here on. So um, now I need to take the derivative of e to the x squared with respect to e to the x. If I think, you know, feel free to just go like this, replace e to the x by a u and write that as 2u. The derivative of squaring is just multiplying by 2. So that's going to be, um, that's the derivative of e to the x squared respect to e to the x. It's, the, it's what I just did here, except that I'm replacing e to the x by u. And then there's the derivative of e to the x respect to x. That's the easy part, uh, because I know it by heart. I mean, it's the easy part, but also the part you're most likely to get wrong because it's the part you're likely to forget because you don't you look at this and you don't think of using the chain rule, and then um, sadness comes to your life. So this is e to the x times e to the x, um, which I guess is e to the x squared. So that's the answer. Um, Let's do another one, the derivative of e to the 2x. If you're suspicious right now, um, maybe, maybe you have good reason, maybe wait two minutes. Um, um, so the derivative of e to the 2x, so I'm doing the general. Now, uh, this is a function where I first multiply by two, then I, so that's the inside function, 2x. The outside function is e to the u. If I take u equals 2x, I get the, I get the function I started with. <clears throat> so um, well, let's do, let's call it u. So, this is a uh, derivative of e to the u respect to u. So the chain rule says, put an extra du in there. Once in the, in the bottom of the derivative, once in the top of the derivative to get back where you started. 
And now the derivative of e to the u respect to u is e to the u. And the derivative, well, u was 2x. So this is the derivative of 2x respect to x. And now e to the u is just e to the 2x. Um, and the derivative of 2x, well, the 2 comes out. And the derivative of x respect to x, very conveniently, also um, also that behaves like a fraction because the derivative of x respect to x is just one by the power rule. So I get twice the function I started with. So I just show you two functions that I that whose derivative is their double. Or did I? Uh, I I didn't. I just show you one. Uh, wait, suspense. If you have, if you do an exponential of an exponential, this is the same thing as uh, as like multiplying the exponents, right? You take write some simple numbers and convince yourself that if I multiply a by itself b times and then do that by itself c times, that's the same thing as multiplying a by itself b times c times. Um, so this means that e to the x squared is the same as e to the 2x. So no wonder their derivatives you look the same. So what did I just do? I just did the same derivative twice in two different ways. So I learned double or maybe four times as much because uh, just you know, I'm on fire with all this learning. Um, okay. What's the next one I wanted to do? Uh, let's do, let's do, I'm liking this first one, same one twice today. I'm feeling this. Let's do the derivative of the logarithm of the quotient. Oh no, wait, what am I doing? I don't know the derivative of the logarithm. Let me pause and remember what I'm about to do. Right, I, I don't know why I wrote a logarithm. I guess when I don't know what to write, I write a logarithm. Um, by the way, you secretly, you know how to take the derivative of logarithm right now. Uh, you don't you don't know that you know but you know and on monday i'll make you realize that you know <clears throat> so really we you know all the derivatives that anyone knows okay so um i there's two functions f i f and g that i know nothing about and i'm going to take those derivatives so it's like um it's exciting because there's more letters actually and and also um I'm going to put a constant in there. So so how do you compute this function? What is this formula saying? It's saying, if you give me x, I have to do f of x and then add a. So that's, I guess that's a composition. Then do sine. So that's another composition. And then divide it by the composition of g and cosine. So there's, um, so well, that's a quotient. There's a big type quotient there. So uh, I guess the the last thing I did was the the last thing I did was a quotient, and probably the last thing I did was the most is the most reasonable to start with. So let's do the quotient rule. Um, the quotient rule says um, take the denominator squared and then and then you gotta you gotta do the fun things on the top so the fun things is low so all I gotta do is copy things carefully. So taking that derivative is really just about following rules very carefully, which is 
harder, might be harder than it sounds. So low Z high, because whenever you do a thing, you should put brackets there. So I just copied what um, who low is and who high is, but I guess I don't have space. Let's create some space out of nowhere. Oh, that's right. Uh, let's make this it better. <gasps> that's worse. Oh, oh. Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble. Uh, mm. All right, perfect. So here's low, uh, low, here's T high minus, um, here's high and here's T low. Again with, um, with brackets just in case because do I need them? I'm not sure. Let's just uh, let's just put them there, just in case. Okay. So now, what I well, all I really need is to. <clears throat> there's a bunch of stuff there, but I, I only care about the derivatives. I'm not gonna everything that doesn't have a ddx. I'm not gonna simplify. I mean, I guess there's some trig identities, but I'm I don't think that would make it simpler. It'd just make it make me keep going, but. Just because I'm doing things doesn't mean I'm improving. So I'm going to put brackets. I'm going to write cosine squared, but just write brackets just in case. OK, so like I said, I'm not taking the derivative of this. So I'm not, I mean, nothing I can do to simplify it. So now for the next part, I do have a, something to do. I need to take. I need to do the chain rule. So I'm going to do it. Let's see if I can do it in my head. The inside function is f of x plus a, and the outside is cosine. So I need to take the derivative of the outside. Apply to the inside. So the derivative of, of sine is cosine and the inside is f plus a. And then I need to take the derivative of the inside. This is the derivative of the inside. a is just a constant. And that's it. And now, finally, I'm going to copy that thing that doesn't have a derivative, sine of f of x plus a. And now I'm doing the same thing. Uh, derivative of the der derivative of the outside. Apply to g of x, which is that. So the derivative of the outside is negative sine, and what I'm taking negative sine of is the inside, which is g of x. And then the derivative of the inside, which is just g prime. I don't know anything about g, so I have no idea what g prime is. And that's it. Uh, all right, so to go with a bang, I'm going to prove the quotient rule. Because why not? No, what I meant is I'm going to prove the power rule and the quotient rule using the chain rule. Because I I didn't prove them before. Um, and I feel like I owe you that. But I did prove the chain rule. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, use Use the thing that I actually know. I did prove the chain rule and the and the product rule. So I'm gonna use those to prove the ones that I didn't prove. And now you will know for sure that I'm not messing with you. I'm not I'm not lying to you when I tell you 
that the derivative of f divided by g is um, low d high minus high d low divided by the denominator squared, because as hilarious as that would be to lie to you about that, um, the thing is, I would totally do that. It would be hilarious, but I, I, I can prove I'm not doing that because I can prove the rule. So how do I find the derivative of x to the n? Well, one thing I can do is uh, use the power the product rule a bunch of times. Like if n was three, I could use the power rule a couple of times and I will get three x squared. Um, but if n was 3000, that's gonna be a problem. What am I doing? Oof, I have a, I'm having a, uh, I, I had a, I just had a ring for it. It's Saturday morning. Um, I'm not, um, I'm not in my best shape. Um, so I'm not going to prove the power rule. I don't know how to prove the power rule. Uh, I'm going to prove the power rule on probably Tuesday. I'm going to prove the quotient rule using the power rule. And then I'm going to prove the power rule using the derivative of logarithm. And in the end, I will have proved everything. So I have a quotient and I want to take its derivative. So what did I, so what did I, what do I know? I know the derivative, uh, well, I know the product rule. So what if I just write this as a product? Well, if I write this as a product, um, I can put this into little pieces. So this is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So now it's a matter of computing the derivative of one over g of x. And I can do that. I can do that using the chain rule. Um, just make u equals g of x or or don't use an extra letter, then the derivative of one over gx uh, is the derivative of one over u. And the chain rule says that this is the derivative respect to u times the derivative of u respect to x. And the derivative of one over u, I know by the by the power rule, which I'm pretending I know, but I don't. Uh, I could do that with the definition. It would be the worst in the world. And u is g of x. So this is just going to be the derivative of g. And the power rule says that this is u to the negative 2 times negative 1. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Subtract 1 from negative 1. That gives you negative 2. And this is g prime of x. So this is, so now since I said that u, u is g of x, this is going to be negative 1 g of x to the negative 2 times g prime of x. So the derivative of the, um, of the quotient actually has this expression. which um, I'm not sure about um, because I already know one formula for this. Uh, so I, I mean, I hope I got the correct answer and the answer, the answer is that I did. I did get the correct answer. Just gotta simplify this a little bit. Write this as a fraction, put the minus sign in there, minus, f of x, write the negative power as a square in the denominator. Uh, and now I have two fractions that I would like to add. So how about I give them a common denominator? Uh, well, this is a multiple of that. Um, so all I need to do to give them a common denominator is multiply both by g of x. So let's do that. And maybe now, 
you are starting to recognize this. And well, that's that. That's a, well, maybe I should write one more step. That's the freaking quotient rule, uh, which seems like a crazy formula that makes no sense. At least that's what it seems like to me, but actually it makes all the sense because um, it comes from all these other formulas that I sort of understand. So really only knowing the derivative of one over X and the and the product rule and the chain rule, you can know what the quotient rule is. So you don't need to memorize the quotient rule. Uh, you can just do this. That wasn't even that hard. Okay. Um, now that's going to be it. Now I'm going to let you enjoy the, your weekend. Um, do a YouTube outro. Uh, tell you very aggressively to hit the like button and that kind of shit. And say goodbye. With and I have to I have to cut myself mid sentence. So good.